Hello, welcome back to Clash of the Commanders, Villains Edition. This week we are answering the question, who was the most villainous character or figure in the Southern Campaign? There's many, many options out there, um, both Patriot and Loyalist, but I chose Bloody Bill Cunningham. Just a warning out there, there are details of murder and violence in these stories that some may find disturbing. Um, William Cunningham was only 19 when the Revolutionary War started um, and he was described as a jovial, generous, and open-hearted person but with a quick and fiery temper. Now it may be hard to envision somebody with such a description becoming one of the most villainous figures of the Revolution. But by the end of the Revolution, this young man has gained the nickname Bloody Bill. Had the war ended differently, he may have been remembered in a different light. But it didn't, and so he has remained Bloody Bill throughout history. But I'll let Bloody Bill's actions towards the end of the war speak for themselves to convince you of just how villainous the character he was. Unlike his cousins Robert and Patrick Cunningham, who had been loyalists from the get-go, William joined the Patriot Militia who captured Fort Charlotte in 1775. He also joined the campaign against the Cherokee in 1776. During the first year of the war, he had a disagreement and an argument with his commanding officer, Captain John Caldwell over the terms of his enlistment. This argument resulted in his arrest and court-martialing. However, he was acquitted and returned to service. But his dissatisfaction with the Patriots had begun to take root. Finally, in 1778, Cunningham was pushed to the point of no return when his disabled and epileptic brother, John, was whipped to death and his father abused by a Patriot gang led by Captain William Ritchie. Learning of his brother's death, Cunningham swore revenge. He tracked Ritchie down, shot, and killed him. Although Cunningham no longer served with the Patriots, he did not yet join the British and Loyalists. It was not until the British had a firm hold on South Carolina in 1780 that Cunningham would join them. He enlisted under the command of Major Patrick Ferguson in the provincial militia. Once sided with the British, Cunningham took to heart Cornwallis's orders to execute all rebels who refused to pledge allegiance to the crown. And by 1781, he had been um, promoted to major. In the fall of 1781, after the British and Loyalist troops had withdrawn from the back country to Charleston, um, Cunningham led a party of around 300 men on an expedition known as the Bloody Scout. By this time, there was no military purpose for this expedition. But instead, it was an expedition of revenge. Throughout the fall, Bloody Bill oversaw massacres, murders, and terrorized the South Carolina backcountry. He left a wake of blood, bodies, and tears. Bloody Bill kicked off this reign of terror in October of 1781 at Hartley's Creek now known as Hellhole Creek in Lexington County. There, Bloody Bill and his men massacred 28 Patriots, dismembering and mutilating their bodies. Two of the most well-known massacres of the Bloody Scout were, Cloud, were at Clouds Creek and Hayes Station, deeper into the backcountry. At Clouds Creek in current Saluda County, 30 Patriots under Captains James Butler Sr. 
and Captain Sterling Turner stopped to fix their non-firing guns at a local man's cabin. When Cunningham learned of their position, he and his men attacked relentlessly on November 17th. Although the Patriots attempted to defend themselves, they quickly ran out of ammunition and attempted to surrender. Bloody Bill, however, refused, and he killed the two captains himself with his sword while his men finished the rest, with the exception of two who managed to escape. One due to a case of mistaken identity. However, he was traumatized for life as he supported his comrade out of the cabin. His comrade refused to answer the question of who he was. When he refused, his skull was cleaved in two by a saber while he still leaned on Bledsoe. After the massacre, Colonel Leroy Hammond reported to General Green that the captain's head was cut off and one butler was tortured with more savage cruelty. Both his hands were cut off whilst alive and it is said many other cruelties committed to him too shameful to repeat. As Bloody Bill and his men continued from Clouds Creek, they stopped at Oliver Tull's to have their horses reshod. As soon as Tull's finished the job, Bloody Bill killed him, his sons, and a slave. Two days later, on November 19th, at Hayes Station, located in modern Lawrence County, Cunningham and his men attacked Colonel Joseph Hayes and about two dozen of his men. The Patriots took refuge in a blockhouse, but it was soon set ablaze and they were forced to surrender. It's said that Hayes was able to obtain a written promise from Bloody Bill that they would be treated humanely. Whether that's true or not, doesn't really matter. Hayes and his second in command, Daniel Williams, were taken and hanged from a makeshift gallows. When the gallows broke, with them still breathing, Cunningham hacked them to pieces and his men dismembered 14 others. Other instances of brutality during Cunningham's Bloody Scout included the murder of Captain Steedman as he lay in his sickbed, the murders of John and James Wood, and Hillard Thomas. By December, Patriot forces under the command of Andrew Pickens chased Bloody Bill and his men back to Charleston, putting an end to his reign of terror. At the end of the war, Bloody Bill fled to Florida, where he continued his descent further into villainy. By 1785, he had been exiled from Florida for plundering and looting. Two years later, he died in Nassau. Thank you for joining us. I hope that you've enjoyed this week's theme. Let us know who you think the most villainous figure in the Carolina backcountry was.